G'day and welcome back for more Space Engineers Survival. I've been thinking about this corridor and as a few people have mentioned, with it being all in white, it is pretty dull. It worked okay when it was shorter, but now that it's longer, the white is just so overwhelmingly bland. The shapes I still really like. I'm quite happy with how the design comes together in terms of looking interesting, but I feel like we need to add some more colour to this so that it will really pull the whole thing together. And what I was thinking of doing was adding a little bit of colour to the roof, probably maybe making those catwalks yellow. That might add enough colour without going too overboard. And then these inset parts, making them a bit of a grey. Something possibly like, I think there's a grey out here. Yeah, this grey stripe in the ceiling, making it something like that sort of middle tone grey. So I'm going to try and do some of that. And then for the floor, maybe do... Uh, the floor's a bit harder. Because the floor's flat, any colour we add is going to be quite a lot more obvious. Maybe I could do a little bit of a very light grey for these sections just off the main walkways. Try that. Let's go grab a spray painting tool because of all the detail around here, we are never going to be able to do this with the default paint thing. All right, let's, let's try these catwalks first. Hmm. I think, I think that kind of works. Now, maybe a middle gray like this for those insets. Something that kind of pushes them further back so they don't look as merged with the other pieces. That'll probably make the detail work stand out even more using colour to do it. I'm pretty happy with that actually. That's ended up making it look a lot more interesting in the roof. In fact, it's almost enough to be happy with this altogether, but I think what we'll do is just bring this up to out there and see what happens if I paint these bits. Hmm, that's a nice, I think that's a nice little bit of detail. Maybe if I even do it on this, on these catwalks, just to separate them a little bit more. Let's see how that turns out. This could be a bad decision. <laughs> hmm, I'm not sure that I like that. Yeah, I think I prefer it in white. I, the, the gray just made it too dark down the center. One of the things I really do like about using interior wall blocks as our floor is that we can get this color difference without having the block edges come out. If I had have made this in steel plate, I'd have block edges between all of these and that would really draw attention to the color difference. Whereas I like that it's kind of subtle here. I, I like that the, we can do this sort of variation. And I suppose what this would drive me to do, if I ever wanted to make something look a bit more dilapidated, I'd probably be inclined to try it with interior wall blocks first, since we'd be able to have color variation gradually within a space. So you could go from a white to a rusty colored sort of thing and do it gradually without any block edges coming into play. I wanna try one more thing with the color here. Oh, what did I just paint? Nothing. How does that work? That might be too much yellow. Maybe a bit too much. Although it may be too much because I've just got too many pots. If I reduce the number of pots, it might work out a bit better. I suspect I'm not going to like this in grey. Yeah, that looks... <laughs> that looks really depressing. <laughs> oh, that looks terrible. Uh, let's not do that. Let's go back to the yellow, but I'm going to get rid of half of these pots. We'll have the first two. And then we'll have these two. And then maybe if we just do this one. Yeah, we'll get rid of the others. So this is going to be a bit of a fiddle around with color design because I've also got to do some color design work in the cafeteria area as it did not work out right with the blue. How's that? Yeah. And I'm also thinking of changing these blue lights to make them orange like the ones around the ticks parking area so that we've kind of got a more consistent color scheme throughout the base because a lot of the choice of blue here was done well before I decided that yellow was going to be one of the, well, 
before I decided that I was basically going to go with the colors for Cerberus from Mass Effect. So with fewer tubs, I think we can get away with them in yellow. It doesn't overwhelm quite so much. Plus, I think with the longer hallway, it is nicer having fewer tubs. Having them every single spot was getting a bit too much. Yeah, I'm happy with that. And now on to what I said I was going to build today, which is building some sort of living space. If I go to spectator cam, which is still looking at the little scanner room, which is going to get a similar treatment later, but because it's going to need a complete rebuild, I'm going to save that for another video for another episode. This is a problem. This is where I was going to build my living quarters. This bit that stick would stick right out of the mountain. If I was happy sticking stuff through the walls, if I wasn't trying to make this whole thing underground and relatively hidden, I would probably be quite happy with the concept of building some nice living quarters that had exterior views and all that sort of thing, but it really wouldn't fit with the rest of the design. And so because I don't have enough room here, I was sort of left with two choices. I could either put another bend in the corridor and go off that way and then try and build my apartments down there. Uh, which does make a sort of sense. And I'm tempted to do it that way. Or instead of having the command center come straight off the end of this hallway, I could extend this hallway along this way and then move out to the side here for the control center, having the control center next door and potentially with a communicating door between it and the refinery control room, which I feel there's a bit of logic there. The downside of a very long corridor here though is the light limit. So if I've got a very long corridor here and I've got all of these lights, there's a much higher chance that we'll end up with flicker. Much as you can sort of see could have been a problem here. See, if I, as I pop through the wall, I think you can... No, not quite. But I, I was very lucky that I've managed to get away with very few lights down here. Because it would be very easy with such a long open space to end up with light flickering because I've got too many of them. The alternative would be to switch out those corner lights for interior lights, but I really don't like the look of interior lights as, well, living space lighting. For engineering spaces, they're perfect, and I'm not a big fan of the corner lights, but the corner lights just have that extra bit of style that makes them fit far better as a living area type lighting setup. But they just don't have the range for me to put any fewer than what I've currently got. As you can already see, there are dark bits between them anyway. I could set the offsets a bit higher and drop the light down, but I really don't like the effect that has. It ends up making the light look really fake, because obviously it is. The light's coming from somewhere where the block isn't actually present. So, with all that chatted about, I think I might still chance making the ultra long central corridor but what could be oh the bit I don't like about that though is that the cafeteria is here why would the cafeteria and the med bay be here if not kind of between the living area and where the people actually work uh, no I'm, I'm gonna have to go with the corner aren't I I think it's the most... Yeah. Yep, we'll go with the corner. So, if we're going with that as our approach, I'm going to need to drill out a little bit further to be able to... And I'm totally cheating with the spectator cam here, but... I've done it so many times now, I kind of <laughs> think it's uh, vaguely acceptable. So I need to go another... One more block on the floor, and then if I have a little bit of a corner on it, Hopefully I won't pop out. What I might do is make a little GPS marker here and put one on the outside just to make sure I don't do something stupid. So 24 meters, so I really can't go more than about eight blocks. Otherwise I'll be very, very close to the surface. Might hand drill this first bit. And then once I've started on the curve, I've got an idea for a drilling rig that should be able to tunnel out this corridor really, really quickly. 
I wonder if there's some way to transition to a thinner corridor. Probably isn't. I think it'd look a bit weird going from a wide corridor to a thin one. Unless I totally close it off. Which I don't really want to do. If I'd been making this place as a properly defensible facility, what I probably should have done was make it with glass doors to block off various areas and to seal places off in case something bad happens, that sort of thing. But I wasn't really thinking that way when I designed most of this area. And clearly, I was not paying attention to the surface distances and I designed some of it either because it's ended up with me not being able to do the design I wanted to do. Paint in here. I'll paint the, uh, I'll do some color designs in here at the end of the episode and then you guys can give me some opinions on which you think works best. So my camera is currently at about the corner where these two bits will come past and as you can see I am just on the outside. This is going to be very very tight. I'm gonna to have to left click drill to get this corner in or introduce a diagonal on this side to try and cut away this bit because this is the closest point, the top corner. And I think the smartest thing to do would be to introduce a bit of a diagonal on that side of it, on the outer edge of the corner. But how to do that without it looking weird. So I guess if we go with, let's take that one out because it's up the wrong way. So if we have our lighted ones coming across there and then going to that one, then have our blank ones filling in the other gap, then some catwalk opens but they will need to be like this they'll need to be zigzagged and actually connect to one another otherwise i think it'll just look strange having these occasional potholes this is why i tend to avoid diagonals in my designs just because once you're stuck with blocks that can't do them you end up with shapes that you're not really wanting to use but are left as your only viable options so if we have then our other way, on that one. It's a little bit like the strange shapes I had to come up with for the goose's parking spots, the ones that were on the diagonals that I still haven't built anything to fill. I might just check with F8 again, the spectator cam, and see how close I am. Oh, I've got heaps of room now. Okay, cool. I'm safe. Excellent. All right, so I can just get on with the design. That is good. It's making me really nervous being this close to the surface because popping out at this time would be so disappointing. And I don't really have a blueprint to lay down to test to see how far I can go either. That's your other option. If you don't have access to spectator cam and you want to check whether you're going to pop through, just slap down a projector and have a measured... I suppose we could... You could probably make a tape measure sort of projector, uh, projection blueprint. Something that's got different colours at each distance marker so you know exactly how far you are. That could be kind of useful to have in your blueprint library. Well, that's... Oops. That's a hole. <laughs> I think this looks okay. I, as I was saying, it's really hard to get diagonals that I'm happy with. I feel like this is continuing the same width so it feels just as wide through the diagonal section as it does in this bit maybe a tiny bit skinnier but not too bad so for the roof this one will be the same as the rest of the bits so we'll pop those blocks in we'll just do all armor let's let's just do it nice and simple first so instead of trying to do something too clever I'll try it with something simple and then we can always change it up once it's in there. All right, how does this look with the really simple setup? Ah. Not sure that I like it. I think what it might need is a little bit of those catwalks continuing through, even if they do end up non, -con even if aren't, they aren't continuous with one another. So they do a great job of drawing attention to the fact that I haven't been able to use the shapes that I really wanted to. Yeah, I think that's going to look a bit better, even though, as mentioned, don't like those corners. I feel like it's the best of a bad bunch of options. All right, with that out of the way, now for the fun thing. And part of the reason why I put this cargo container here 
was that I wanted to have an easily accessible cargo point for this next construction, which is going to need a bit of this space drilled out. But what I'm planning on building is a piston mounted drilling machine that's going to neatly drill out this corridor almost exactly to the dimensions I wanted. Last time I built a piston mounted drilling machine in this corridor, or for one of these corridors, I made the silly decision of making the whole thing in large grid. Why would I do it in large grid? I don't need to do it in large grid, I can do it in small grid and have it more accurate. If I use a, if I use an advanced rotor, I can then have the conversion, I can have all of this stone being piped to our refineries, and I can get all of the resources from it as well. So that is exactly what I'm going to do. And my other reason to use the advanced rotor is that we can then detach the mining head and with the mining head detached, retract our pistons and then add some more pistons in and be able to push it further along using the same drill head. So this should be a bit of fun to set up. Now I will need to lay down a few of these and can I have it on that row? Yes, I can, but I need to have it higher. That'll do. And we start with a piston. And we go to an advanced rotor. And we grind off the head. Weld this up and then we can start getting construction going on this drill apparatus. Terminal, advanced rotor, and then whichever one it is that needs a rotor head. Add small head. Share inertia tensor. Piston, share inertia tensor. Must remember to do this throughout, because if I don't, I could end up in a bit of trouble. And there is our small head. Now, from this, I need to grab a couple of parts because I don't have them. Put a little work light down so that Reggie can see what's going on. And now, on the end of this, we need to have a conversion to small parts. And I think the best way will probably be... Yeah, that will work. Then, off this, we need to have... Don't need that. Don't need that right now. One of those and some drills. And we'll need landing gear. And that should be it. So with that oriented that way, we can pop one of these down there. And... Yeah, and one just here. And the drill should fit on the end of that. Right there. And another drill out this way. Oh, hang on a second. Might have done something a little bit wrong here and may need to adjust. Let's see how close these drills get on this other side. I may need to slide the drills across a block. Yeah, that's right. That's got one block space and this almost has three. So I need to move the drills just one block to their right so that we can have this fitting the gap properly. So if I have that block, that cargo junction there and then put another one there, we should be able to get much closer to the wall on this side while still saying close enough on the other side, I think, hopefully. Yeah? Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. That works. And another one there. Then a little drill on there. And the idea of this is we've got small drills so we can go a lot tighter to the walls. Which will make it a lot easier for us to get the shape that I'm after. And still be able to keep all these resources but also not have to do this by hand. It's a lot more drills than we would have with large grid, but it's, I reckon it's gonna work a whole lot better. I guess we will find out soon. Or, you know, in a while, once I've managed to weld all these things up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 28 drills. Yikes. So the last thing before I weld up all those drills is to set up a piston with a landing gear on the end. That's going to be needed for whenever I want to detach the rotor head from the rotor. And you could do a setup like this with something like a connector system. 
but there's a reason I didn't do that. If I had a connector on there, I would need to have battery power on the drill head. Uh, whereas this way, the drill head can be completely unpowered and separate from the base. So there we go. That'll allow us to lock down and then we can retract the whole setup, grind off the rotor head and move the next bit forward. Perfect. All right, drills are done. I'm going to need a button around here to turn it on and off because it's going to be a pain to do manually every time. Let's grab our drills. It'll be all these purple ones. And that will be corridor drills for now. This should be fairly straightforward. If I switch this on, I get something really, really loud. Awesome. Then I go to here and I increase the speed to, let's try 0.2. Normally with a piston and large grid drills, I can get up to 0.4 quite safely. So we'll slowly increase up to that. And there we go, 0.4 meters per second. And it looks like... At most I'll just have to drill out a little bit of a corner. Nice. I'm pretty happy with this. Let's have a look at the stone in our inventory and see if it's getting processed by the refineries. No. Uh, stone. 300,000. Will get processed. Oh, I think I know why. Uh, if I go to control panel and go to inventory, go to edit, and I think, yeah, uh, process stone in refineries. True. I think I've got the latest version of this here yeah, from the third. Check code. Okay. All right, now let's check the inventories of the refineries. Oh, I think I've already processed all the stone. Oh no, they haven't. It's still there. Yeah, now they're, they're automatically pulling it. Cool. We will get plenty of iron from this. All right. Next stage is turn off drills. Build a little platform out here for that landing gear to sit square on. If I had something in my inventory to build it with, I can then extend that piston, lock that landing gear, and detach the whole thing. Need to make sure that I don't bow anything as well. So I'm gonna get this just to the point where it locks. There we go. Then we can detach that rotor head. I wish I could do that through build vision. Advanced rotor. It'll be this one, I think. Detach. Then we retract our piston. Yeah. Grind off the advanced rotor. Inventory full. Empty our inventory before we do that. And add another piston to this. And then you can just use a setup like this to get any sort of base hole that you want. You could even use this as a setup for a proper mine if you're starting out a new new session and you're trying to collect a whole bunch of, bunch of dirt first. It actually ends up being quite effective. Add our advanced rotor back on the end here because I can't fit another piston in. It's a pity I couldn't fit three pistons in there. But each level that you do of this, you'll be able to push much, much further the next time because you'll be adding an extra piston because it's sort of exponential, I guess. With the first piston, we were able to add one. With the next two, we'll be able to add two, possibly three, and it'll keep going up and up and up. And I mean, once you're getting to beyond 100 meters in depth or in length of something, you push it a fair way. And Sharonesh tensor rotor lock attach. Then to disconnect this landing gear, the easiest way I reckon is just to do this. And we're good. Retract our little piston. Turn on our drills. And start extending our pistons. So this time what I'm gonna do is do this one at point two and this one at point two. I find that if I push it up to 0.5 meters per second, the whole thing starts to rattle and become very unhappy. So I'm going to stick with 0.4 as my maximum speed. If you're only drilling out a small area, building a massive drill apparatus like this would only be worth your time if you needed the resources. I sort of need them at the moment, I think. If I look for iron, we've got how much in storage? 
Where's our iron? There, 24,000. That's not all that much, considering we should be producing a whole bunch. Yeah. We've got a whole bunch of stuff being queued up by the inventory manager because we have been using a lot of materials lately. I think I might even only have a few thousand steel plates left. Oh, one and a half thousand, so I'm really running low. I might shift these if it'll let me. All right, then it's the same process for the next bit. This is unfortunate. I'm going to have to hide the fact that I've lost all of this voxel material because the corridor windows are going to show straight through to that back wall, which is, it's a bit annoying. There's not much I can do about it. With the new block placement mode for grids, it's kind of easy to place these bits down as well. I don't have to continue them off the other end. Oh, I should turn off those drills. They're really out. Turn off the drills, lock our landing gear and then add a couple more. Given the size of that cafeteria, I think I'm going to be a lot larger than my original thought of uh, 12 to 15 people. I think that might have been a gross underestimate. So I may need to do some bunk spaces just so that we've got a bit of bit of that capacity without having to build a huge number of rooms. Uh, what have I? What am I looking for? Advanced rotor. Yeah, you can definitely see an easy exponential increase in the number of pistons you can fit with a setup like this. Doesn't take too much work either. And even if you were operating vertically, you could place these blocks into the wall and get the landing gear to lock and hold it all in place. With rock being useful now, I'm so much happier to build drill things like this to try and get a relatively accurate drilled out space. And then I can do the fine details by hand. Previously, because I was wanting to destroy it all anyway, building an apparatus like this and then having to figure out how I was going to destroy stuff was just going to be a major hassle. But it totally changes up the reasoning behind why you would do something like this now. But we've basically just gotten an instant corridor, <laughs> well, not instant, but a much more quickly drilled out corridor that is almost the same length as this one oh, along here, Energy I think. Low. Yeah, it probably is about the same length as that, actually. <laughs> cool. And it's still going a bit further. And if we have a look in our inventory, our refineries are nicely full of stone. And we've got how much stone accumulating in our storage. 1.6 million kilos. Nice. That's going to go a fair way, I reckon. Oh, man. I am so using this as my drilling method in the future. The other nice thing about using the small ship drills is what they require. We go to this. We need 12 large steel tubes and 180 steel plate. This is just 20 steel plate for these. The amount of iron required is so much less. So if you're starting out a new game, you could, act, you could potentially get a lot more of these little drills going more quickly than going for the large grid ones. Plus, you don't have to have them as tightly spaced as I've done. You can leave an extra little gap between each one and still have this drilled out perfectly cleanly with no little cheeky voxels left behind. So I, I think I'm going small grid from now on. It seems like it would be the best way to go. Let's lock our landing gear down. And I'm not going to attach, I'm not gonna put any more pistons down but I will retract them so that they're out of the way. And if I need to, I can always add them back in to get this whole thing set up again. But if I leave the drill rig there, it's ready to go again once I make a decision whether this corridor is long enough or not. Without the pistons there, it really, really does feel long in here. That's a, yeah, that's a fair way to walk. Hopefully I can make this corridor be enough for all of the accommodation spaces. And now for the last thing this episode, let's have a look in here. Let's get out our paint gun. And I think I'm going to change these to yellow. And the nice thing about this paint gun is I can kind of make them slightly different yellows within the same tone without having to go into the paint menu. So I can make some of them a little more pale and worn and some of them a bit fresh and brighter. So there's a subtle variation between those, which is I think a big improvement. The next thing I'd like to do in here is cut out some of the ceiling. Oh, actually, 
Let's run across to the medical bay and get some energy before I get too excited. So what I was thinking was opening up this ceiling a bit. Because right now it's... It feels quite tight. I don't mind it too much, but I think this will be better if I do this. Then, like the corridor, what I think I'll do is I'll put these in yellow. Which will bring a little bit of colour into the ceiling and a bit of extra depth. Turn off my lights. Yeah. Just need to get this light spread out a bit further. So I think the yellow chairs is the way I'm going to go. The bits that I'm not sure about how I'm going to colour are things like this billiards table. So most people suggested a brownish colour, so, which means let's move over to that sort of orange range, bring up the saturation a bit, bring down the value a bit. Maybe we'll try that. That's brownish. And then I got suggestions of anything from red through to burgundy for these seats. So red through to, let's make a burgundy. Uh, let's get rid of that color, that one. So red, decent saturation, a bit more value. I think maybe you need that end. Something kind of around there. Let's have a look. Actually, you know what? I don't mind this. The orangey red though. Maybe people were wanting me to do proper capac orange. In fact, I think this is orange. It is orange. <laughs> there you go, capac orange couches. Don't mind that either. I think having this mostly in the warmer color palette sort of works. I think what we will do is have a vote between what about a proper red? Let's just go a full on red and see what it looks like. And then we can put the brown. And there we go. We got four options. We have our lipstick red, our sort of burgundy ish. Uh, it's kind of burgundy. I mean, if you compare it to, say, a Google, a Google search for burgundy, it's not too bad. Maybe I went a bit more plum than burgundy, but still. And then we've got our Capac orange. And then we've got our brown. So those are going to be the four options. I'll add a little poll in the video. And whatever the results of that poll are, uh, the, the poll will be up here in the top right. There'll be a little eye somewhere around there. Hopefully I remember to do it this time. Last time I did a poll, I forgot to put it in. <laughs> so hopefully I don't forget this time. So it'll be between brown, Capac orange, burgundy plum, and red. And then I'll just paint it whichever one you guys think looks best. I think any of them could work. But before we end, I also want to make this thing yellow. So I think adding some color into the kitchen area will make it look better. Oh, that's right. There's another thing I've got to do in here. Not in the kitchen, but in the cafeteria. There was a really cool suggestion that was given to me, which is going to be another LCD image I need to make, which was to put up some LCDs in here that'll show like news screens. And if I come up with a couple of new screens, we could even have them changing over so it looks like they're a bit more dynamic. So there we go, that in yellow to match the chairs, I think works. In white, and I think I'll go with these text panels. They'll look more like TV screens. One up there, one up there. And I think one up here will be okay as well. I really want up there. That looks weird beside the menus. One up there. So a few TV screens in here will make it feel a lot more interesting and like they get to watch something about the outside world. I might try and make a little picture for that at some point. See how well I can do making a picture that works on the corner LCDs. Because it might be fun to put a cheeky little unisex bathroom sign in there. Since I've only made one bathroom. Well, I think... I'm much happier with this color palette. Using the blue in here was just a bit odd, considering the rest of the base is done with the yellow. And you guys need to tell me which of these colors you think works best. Next time, we will actually get on to building some more stuff. I don't know whether I'll... Ah, I don't know whether I'll get into building an apartment just yet, 
or whether I'll get distracted by doing some further improvements on this medical facility. I haven't done any more work on this as I mentioned earlier, or at least I think I mentioned earlier, because I'm going to have to rebuild this whole thing as I would like to put a control room in. I know I sort of thought I wasn't going to do that, but I feel, yeah, it's going to work much better with a control room that you can look through the glass and then see the thing spinning. Also, given the amount of space I've got, I'll be able to replace some of those lights with spotlights. I'll be able to put some blueprints on projectors and make them kind of scan back and forth along it. And because this bed is only attached to one piston, I'd have to rebuild that whole thing anyway, as I don't feel confident being able to do any reattachment tricks with how cramped the space is in here. And I'd be wanting to move the bed back here, which would then mean this door would have to go, which would then mean this corridor would have to change. And I, yeah, I don't, I don't feel happy with that. I'm going to need to do a full redesign for that scanner to get it up to the state that I want it, which I may do sort of as a quick time lapse for some of the rebuild and then show you guys what I've done. So there's all that and plenty more to come. And I will see you then.